Earlier on, I spoke to Kofi Yabua from the Mozilla Foundation. I started our conversation by asking him to explain the concept of a digital sweatshop. A quick example um, of what has been happening, just to give people context, um, has been how um, tech companies across you know, Global North uh, come into Global South um, to sort of hire, um, for lack of better words, uh, cheap labor to work uh, on uh, their, their, their product. But in that sense, what they do basically uh, is to go to, for instance, countries, known countries like the Philippines, uh, which is in Asia, uh, in countries like Kenya, um, just to be able to sort of uh, get at not really like tech people, but uh, people with even just low digital skills be able to train their models that they are going to use uh, to build their product. Um, so we have what we have seen is the pockets of these um, sweatsh digital sweatshops um, across, especially in East Africa and Southern Africa. Is it is it a growing sector? What is it that makes these countries attractive for tech firms to say, you know, to farm out this job of trying to train their large language models like ChatGPT, for example, to filter out uh, the violence, the harm, the racism, so that they can then be deployed, quote unquote, in a safe state um, in Western markets? I think the underlying thing actually is less of whether they, they, are, they are using um, these individuals um, to be able to train their models to reflect um, some inclusivity as to more of hiring cheap labor in this market with the underlying, um, um, how do you call it? It's like they are camouflaging that to say, oh, we are providing jobs. So I think that, I mean, as you, as you, as you know, um, Eastern Southern Africa and even across Africa, uh, youth unemployment is a huge problem. And so when um, companies uh, like big tech companies come into our part of the world to say, hey, you know what? We are hiring over a thousand people. Of course, politicians will jump onto that wagon. And, and I think that is why it's one of the reasons why we have a lot of these uh, companies coming in um, to sort of provide jobs. Um, but we know that uh, some of these jobs that you're providing is actually more of training, uh, providing uh, benefits to them um, than to us. And that has resulted in those unfair treatment, um, unfair dismissal, uh, underpaid workers, um, and a lot of really, for lack of a better word, terrible things um, and disrespect uh, to this workforce. Because these employees, I mean, as we've seen, for example, in the case between Facebook's moderators, for example, and a company that they had outsourced some of these services to, uh, Sama, the, the provision of even just basic mental health support that just wasn't there at all. These individuals are working without any sense of protection. Exactly. I think what uh, most of these companies do, which is really disheartening, is that they work through third party um, companies. And um, so the argument is that, hey, we are not the ones hiring you. Right. Uh, generally speaking, across many sub Saharan uh, economies, is this mistrust, right, between governments on one hand and citizens? Because citizens will say, look, I've paid my taxes, but I'm not even getting the basic services that I need, right? Roads, healthcare, education are not necessarily being delivered in a proper state. And yet, we're in a situation here where we're expecting those same governments to be able to step in and say, you know what, we'll provide uh, proper labor protections, but also go further and think about perhaps regulating uh, the deployment of these large language models as well. Is, is that something that African governments are in a position to do? What, what are the first priorities they need to fix in that area? You see, African, African governments, um, as we have seen in issues or cases that have unfolded um, recently, uh, we have seen that they are less committed in ensuring that, um, you know, the, their people or citizens are well treated. Let's take, for instance, the uh, Twitter Africa case that happened. Um, you know, when, when Twitter came to, to Africa, um, you know, we had the Ghanaian government uh, tweeting about it. Hey, we're excited for Twitter to have its uh, headquarters in Ghana. But guess what? When the uh, unfair dismissal happened, where some of the um, employees didn't get even severances or just you know one to two month severances as compared uh, to their uh, their colleagues in the global north getting really comprehensive and significant severances, we did not see the government of Ghana coming out publicly um, to say that hey Twitter, why are you um, um, treating our employees unfairly, right? I think we are at a point where we know that and, and, and research indicating that there's sort of the, the mistrust in government is increasing. Um, and so people wouldn't want to trust government to be able to you know, provide safety for them, especially in the labor um, uh, uh, scene. However, I think that 
we cannot say that we should, you know, um, employees should protect themselves. That that will not be a significant uh, approach to it. We really need to sort of have um, uh, a movement of, of digital labor uh, that can push government to be able to do it. And I think that's one of the things that we are missing.